What is extranodal natural killer T cell lymphoma nasal type? Well, let's go through some of the words. Extranodal means it's something that doesn't involve lymph nodes, like skin as an example. And nasal means nose. So this is a lymphoma that has markers of natural killer cells and sometimes T cells that can often be found in people's noses. I know that sounds strange. And in other places that aren't lymph nodes like skin. So sometimes a patient might find out that they have this and not by complaining to an ear, nose, and throat doctor, but by going to a dermatologist because they have unusual skin lesions. How is it different from cutaneous T cell lymphoma and what makes it unique? Cutaneous T cell lymphoma is a, a, a group of different conditions. And what they all have in common is that they show up primarily in skin. That is, that's the first place they show up, and they don't often go to other places. What makes this entity unique? This is actually a systemic lymphoma that can show up in skin, almost secondarily. So it's a little bit different the way that it presents. It also looks somewhat different in skin than other cutaneous T cell lymphomas, and that the skin lesions tend to have uh, we use the word medical, medically necrotic or a dead area in the center, you would notice it as a black area that looks like dead tissue. And the reason it looks like that is because this is an entity that invades blood vessels. So when it invades the blood vessels, it stops the blood flow to the area and the tissue dies. So the way it looks is very, very different. And the way it acts is different being in the nose and in the skin. And under a microscope, it looks very different because it has certain markers. So one marker that it has is called CD56. That is a natural killer marker. And that's very unique really to this entity. Um, as well, it has markers that are cytotoxic markers. They have names, perforin, TIA1, uh, granzyme B, and those are also somewhat unique to this disorder. And probably the most unique thing is that this disorder is almost always associated with Epstein-Barr virus. That is, you can see Epstein-Barr virus within the tumor, and we actually follow the, the progress of the lymphoma, whether it's there or whether it's getting better, by blood levels of Epstein-Barr viral loads. So, in so many ways, this is a very different kind of lymphoma, though sometimes people find out about it because of a skin lesion. What does it look like? On the skin, uh, probably the most characteristic finding is in the center of a skin lesion, which can look somewhat like a, a plaque in that it's a kind of a flattish area, though it has some thickness or a nodule, a, a smaller area with more thickness. In the center, it usually has a dead area. That is, it looks like it's black. And that is because of the way this lymphoma acts in occluding or cutting off blood flow to the particular area where it's lodged. What are the treatments? Well, as unique as this lymphoma is, it has a unique treatment as well. And Though it's somewhat resistant to chemotherapy, it is exquisitely sensitive to certain agents. One of them is a drug called L-asparaginase, and it's not really used in, in lymphoma treatment very much at all. It's used in the treatment of leukemias. But for this particular entity, for various reasons about what mutations the lymphoma has and what pathways are activated, L-asparaginase is a key agent in treating patients. And so their treatment almost always involves that, that entity. As well, uh, it is very sensitive to radiotherapy and often there are various areas of involvement that are radiated, specifically the nose. And when people have disease outside their nose, in their skin, often when they're in remission, they may be offered what's called a consolidative transplant. That is, they're already in remission, but we want to keep it that way. We want them to be cured. 
So they're offered a stem cell procedure at some centers using stem cells from the patient, and at some centers may be offering stem cells from another donor. Uh, so the treatment is very, very different and actually quite successful for this entity. If someone unfortunately relapses, there are also some unique treatments that can be offered for this lymphoma. One uh, involves agents against an antigen or a marker on the surface of the cell called CD30. We have a drug called Branduximab vedotin, which is uh, a drug that targets this antigen. And another is a group of drugs called PD-1 inhibitors, which act to rev up the immune system uh, so that it's more effective at killing off lymphomas. And these are two drugs that may be used in other cutaneous T-cell lymphomas, uh, but not so much in other aggressive lymphomas such as this. What is the prognosis? Well, if you were to read literature from maybe 15 or 20 years ago, you'd see that this was a terrible diagnosis and it actually had a name, lethal midline granuloma, before people realized it was a lymphoma because it created such havoc in people's noses and their sinuses that they died. And this is no longer the case all the time. Uh, with the discovery that there are specific agents that treat this lymphoma, the outlook is vastly improved. Uh, and so though there aren't uh, great statistics on what the uh, prognosis is because this is a disorder that's more common in, in Asian countries, in other parts of the world like South America, uh, because there's not global registries, it's very hard to know the exact prognosis. But what I can say with great confidence is that the outlook is 500% better than it was in the past. And that when I treat somebody, I am treating them with the intention to cure them of this condition. That means it will never come back after I treat.